Paul got me shot King back in once again. You saw the video. What if it wasn't just a dream? Now I've been thinking about this a while ever since Phoenix Man resurrected the Subterraneans and the most simple retcons on the Subterranean backstory. Rather, it was a civil war. I thought originally the Monster Association wiped it out, and now it's the civil war, and now it could be before doing it. This, who knows? Who knows? I'm gonna make a separate video about that. But overall, I've always thought ever since the Subterraneans and their entire backstory and their relationship with the Elder Centerpiece and everything, that I always thought ever since they got brought back up, that. What if the whole dream soon gets at the beginning when Punch Man, the manga, and enemy wasn't just a dream and it was some type of premonition or foreshadowing of what can happen to the future? So some might say but the subterranean king wasn't large. Well, the resurrected course is proved they can get bigger than what the subterranean king was. Or if there could be a subterranean king or a subterranean emperor that could be higher levels of this if they weren't all exterminated. But in this one case, I'm starting to lean towards the fact that maybe that whole Dream sequence wasn't a dream after all. Because number one, immediately afterwards, unless the subterraneans are confirmed to have some type of psychic ability, like that one alien from the, uh, uh brought out the father of Goku special, where it just gives you a future permanence, unless they have that type of ability. See, Tama pretty much predicted them subterraneans show up out of nowhere. It just, it just happened out of nowhere. It just, it just happened, and that was it. And I'm gonna find that a little bit strange. That it just kind of just show up, but it just show up out of nowhere immediately afterwards. Immediately afterwards, I mean, from that case, what if the Subterranean King wasn't an actual king, and he was some type of son who was originally promoted to king because his actual father was killed by someone like a Rochu or a Psycho or somebody like that? Could be a possibility. My whole thing is, some might say they go to the whole point. All right, if the Dream Sequence was ever real, then how would you explain how the multiple different sizes of them? And how the subterranean king and later other ones become so large easily with a character like God. Now, the whole thing with God is I'm, <laughs> there's multiple different excuses why the retcons and why they're trying to hit towards God. And Amaya, I, that Amaya mask thing made me mad. It really did. Why they did it right now. Like, that made me mad, but <laughs> I'll get to that some other time. But recently, God has been hyped up, even had the entire Orochi chapter rewritten to just purely hype up God as a character and it would I don't know, God might help resurrect Orochi and he might not hopefully he doesn't hopefully he doesn't but the character of God has been in the background helping characters like Vaccine Man and a homeless emperor just do whatever they want and technically from the mind front especially what happens after the monster association which is not too much of anything at first it wouldn't be too surprised to say Thomas just woke up one day and just, Hey look, God resurrected the Septuarians. Because they did claim that they're from the Earth. They did claim that they're right for rulers from the Earth. And things like that. It is a possibility. If Phoenix Man can resurrect characters, and he's not even considered disaster lover God, then a cosmic entity, something straight out of H.B. Lovecraft, or the color, the color of space, I'm pretty sure he'd be able to do the same thing. And then the same thing. But it have to be somebody... Well, it still have to be bodies to resurrect. On which, it depends if Toxamaki ruined that entire thing or not. It depends. Or if all the subterranean was actually wiped out. It depends on that. Can a whole ancient dinosaur Godzilla guy just came out of nowhere? Toxamaki flattened him and that was just it. That, that was the end of his entire short-lived career of uh, being a destructive monster. But I always thought about that. I always thought... In some type of way, I doubt the whole dream sequence with Saitama is fake. Cause sure, he always wanted a serious fight, but n throughout no type of media, webcomic or otherwise, in that dream sequence was the only time you've ever seen Saitama bleed. We've seen his suit get scuffed up and get some get some sweat and stuff on his forehead, but that's been pretty much it. He has never been actually like hurt. He has never started to bleed. That has never happened. Never. To this day, it has never happened. And no type of media, wet comic manga, what if stories, nothing. Say Thomas has only bled in that one gene sequence. And that with a combination of immediately afterwards, the subterraneans actually show up. I'm telling you, unless it's like that alien from Bardock, there is no reason Say Tama would have had that dream and it just so happened that they show up. And it's not even just any type of old dream. It is a very vivid dream. Cause how come the one time you have a dream where oh say Thomas going all out, he finally gets what he wanted, an actual challenge. Let's see how this go out. Let's go all out. I'm juiced up. Let's see who's the strongest one alive. 
Finally, I get to see what it feels to be pushed to the limit and to truly feel alive. So the one time he had that one particular dream, the Septuarians show up and they give him. That one time. Because you expect, if it was just like, oh, it was just, it was just a, a, a regular old dream, you expect these dreams to be quite frequent. And if Satama is that depressed and that lonely and that sad about the whole entire thing, you will expect that these dreams would be quite often, and quite, quite common, really. Every once in a while, it'll be a brand new villain of the week. But it only happened at one time, and that was it. Once. And that was it. About a particular being that shows up immediately afterwards. Maybe it was a dream from God. The entity. Maybe it wasn't. Who knows? I, know, I always thought it was always quite strange. Uh, how the subterraneans and their backstory is getting brought up so much. Like what type of culture they had. And if everything that the Monster Association is currently living in. Well, besides from being slightly altered by the Monster Association, it was made by the subterraneans. Then why would they worshiping things like or or it, it's similar to like the whole locust from Gears of War. Now how they was worshiping these giant worms. And you had certain ones that can communicate to these giant worms. In this case it's not the earth worm from uh uh, from my uh, Gears of War, in this case, it is the, uh... It is Elder Centipede and his family. And which, we never got a full backstory of how they became monsters at all. That just kind of was showed up and that was it. He just got murdered. I don't know where it just gets just killed. And I, I still kind of feel bad for Junior Centipede. Not because I thought he was some type of good guy. This is the fact that after Metabet beat him, and the way, he looked so sad that he, he got bitten and killed by... It. Metal bat, and he's just, eh. he's that one manga panel, that one scene from the anime. I don't know. He, he looks so sad, so sad. And then Senior Centipede shows up and gets murdered as well. And then Elder Centipede shows up. And we've already seen multiple statues of Elder Centipedes that was built by the Subterraneans. So why was Elder Centipede allowed to join the Monster Association? That the, that the Subterraneans well, could make some pretty good goons, since some of them are from down from Tiger to Demon. Just exterminated. And if a Civil War did break out, Elder Centipede could have set him straight. Could have commanded anything. Just Elder Centipede just sat there. Because he was there. With the Subterraneans. And on top of that. If they were worshipping these uh, Elder Centipede type beings. Then why did they just use Elder Centipede to invade the surface world? Unless Elder Centipede backstabbed them. And just worked with the Monster Association. Before they went up to go fight Saitama. Or what if there was already in the Civil War, and they tried to escape, and that's the whole reason that they started pushing them towards the surface, like they're the Locusts, from Gins of War. Okay, it was their grand plan to do that, but... If you had contact, or seen... That's the thing. I saw another interesting thing. We have seen Deep Sea King, Air Kings, Ancient Kings, Kings, King, Kings of Kings. And these monsters are all show up and claim the exact same hipply hop goop got. Just the same mode. Oh, we're supposed to own the planet. Oh, look what you're doing to the environment. This and that, this and that, this and that. We've heard this garbage time and time again. We could easily work out a deal. Like how the Hero Association won't work out a deal with a Monster Association. But oh no. Psychos thought she was big-brained. Which don't mean you're smarter. Yeah, but I understand that un unnaturally smaller brain than most people. I guess it's pretty much on brain density and not the size of it. But, uh... And let's not try to take that monster show, Jason deal. Nope, we're gonna take over the... That's, the, why is, uh, uh, that's another video of why psychos want to take over the world of a bunch of monsters. Which, I guess now, with the redraw, she was never in full control of Orochi. Is that that's whatever? I talk about it in a different video. But overall, the whole concept of the subterraneans and how they're just being built up. Can you expect those one off characters gets murdered? But nope, more and more we get to learn out more and more about their culture. And if the subterraneans were the ones who made that mural towards God, and they made the whole thing where a bunch of elder centipedes that were supposed to go towards Orochi, and then Orochi was supposed to go towards God, will be sacrificed towards God. Number one is quite ironic that Tatsumaki in the webcomic and in the manga both pretty much flipped the Monster Association upside down. Pretty much dropped it. That's pretty much what she did both times. Either way. No matter which way you look at it, they both got dropped. But the most interesting thing is, number one, if a Rocha was supposed to get sacrificed towards God, if she struck the planet, 
with their whole spear or went somewhere deep down to the core that could have an effect on the cosmic entity and that how that is still technically a sacrifice towards God because I'm not too fond of the idea that oh is God that resurrects a roach inside the series it's just we don't need that much foreshadowing when God is not even a major threat in the webcomic yet either. So it's just, what's the point? Unless you're going to fast track through some stuff. But it, 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 that's, that's just one of the videos. But uh, overall, to go back to what I was talking about with the whole uh, thing. If that was the case, then it would make a lot more sense that since the subterraneans want to build all these monuments, these underground caverns, and things like that. And made the original moral to show that a roach was going, uh, or being like a roachy, was going to get sacrificed to his god. Then, if that's some type of promised prophecy, so wouldn't there be some like religious jealous inside the subterraneans who want to fulfill that prophecy? Meaning that maybe not all the subterraneans were exterminated or was in one spot. Because if there were a civil war happening, then if other people would have heard it, because there was like one main place where people live at, we've seen multiple empires fall throughout history. When they collapse, the people move somewhere else. Not everybody continues to start fighting to keep fighting. There was always evacuations, people who don't got the will to fight, or people are incapable to fight to get held away to like some type of safety or something. Or they break up from their own group and say, I'm sick of this stuff and just leave. So that could be first from the fact that not all the subterraneans are dead, and God just juiced some of them up like they're vaccine, man. Or psychos or somebody like that, and they just and they just go out fighting that way. That way, but even to the point like we have vampires, like actual vampires that exist. Where he come from? Now he has no connection to God, but there's obviously some type of ancient monster that used to exist, or maybe like a, like a monster verse type of thing where it just used to be these kaiju's ruling the world. Because there's no way all these kings are just just showing up out of nowhere and it's just all right. I want to reclaim which mines. One shot, one shot, one shot. Down goes Weasel. Down goes Goodman. It's just quite random. And I believe it all ties back around to submarines. I do believe they will come back in a major way. And I do believe that the whole uh, dream sequence with Saitama will play a bigger role in the story than most people think. Because as the chapters go by, the more redraw is going to get. It's starting to add up more and more that the submarines are number one, are not dead, or they're going to have some type of major influence to the future. Because we have seen God just juice people up on steroids out of nowhere. And I doubt all these like kings and stuff were made by God. But potentially used to rule the planet at one period of time. Back when humanity was still a bunch of cavemen or something like that. More than likely. But then you gotta explain why did they go away then not just trying to come back for it. Because Vaccine Man was never a king. He was just... He was just made and just started blowing up shit. And Homeless Hipper was just an actual homeless man. That's, that's, that's all he is. He's an actual homeless man, and that's it. And he went from bottom tier to dragon just like that. Just like that. Not even say Tama made such a massive jump in a short period of time. I'm supposed to say Tama, it took like, some years. I think it was like, took, like two to three years before he got to the point where he was now. It's just straight training like an animal. Uh, but, uh, uh, a lot of interesting questions. A lot of interesting questions. A lot of, a lot of speculation here. Because anything can happen. Anything, but... I just can't help the feeling that the subterraneans will return in some form of fashion. And I just can't help the feeling that the dream sequence wasn't just a one-off. I look, is it great in the dungeon to the series, man? Is, is, it, is it to get people in their seats? I doubt it was just that. I really do. Because most of this stuff actually occurred in the webcam. It's been planned out. This has been thought out for a reason. So... I don't know you guys thoughts and opinions. Do you believe the submarine the submarines will return to some type of major way or have some type of a big major influence to the future? Because all these hints towards them, their culture and everything like that, what would their work be saying? What would they praying to? What would their connection to the Elder Centipede race if it was a race? And arguably, what what? If Elder Centipede wasn't called Elder Centipede, would his name just be the Centipede King or the Underground King? Would he just be another king or was he made? Because it seems like, according to the ancient churches in the Monster Association, that Elder Centipedes already exist. And those used to be more than one of them. So it's rather that Blast killed one, and the other Elder Centipede showed up and made Blast think he didn't kill it. Or, the Elder Centipede, say, Tama Kit wasn't the only Elder Centipede, because it showed two statues in one. And they were just praying to one singular thing. You don't build two statues of the same thing. Arguably, that'd be disrespectful if you put them right next to each other. Unless you're a super narcissist, which 
at a centipede engine. Which brings even more questions. Because number one, what are the, all these centipedes are coming from? And if they were worshipped, then why would, if they were supposed to be the subterranean civil war, why did they join the Monster Association and then help out the subterraneans? Or why didn't the subterraneans try to invade anything like that? Or why didn't the subterraneans try to work with the Monster Association? I'm pretty sure if you're already killing and slaughtering each other, if it was some type of political leadership conflict, somebody would sign that contract with a Rochi, inside Rochi. You know, t take a few subterraneans for experiments, you know. By the side, not something I wouldn't personally do, but it, it usually what happens. There's a uh, there's a conflict that breaks out, you know. Group three, uh, group C comes out of nowhere. Hey, let's team up. What's happening to group eight uh, people that disappeared in the night? Uh, just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. What you gonna do about a dictator? Whether to become an authoritarian or they just let anybody try to investigate get snatched up as well. So, and there's a lot of questions, a lot of interesting concepts that. People don't really bring up or talk about the whole subterranean thing. Because it just can't be by coincidence. It just can't be by what if that whole say time. Well, well, you know, I have a dream. And they actually show up. And it could be argued since because of that, all that civil war fighting, that's the reason the subterranean king was smaller. The inside Thomas' dream. A uh, uh, grand possibility. Because I can't take that whole dream sequence as a one up that, oh, say Thomas just had these dreams all the time. It doesn't seem like it. It seemed like that was the best dream of an opponent. Even I have had recently a dream about how to meet Epo and how Itagaki was like making fun of Epo and how he was training him and how he's so harsh I and mean, like Epo had silver hair and everything. And then like how he tried to please Epo and then there was a random character named Jose Maris who was always better than him. Always. And that dream led to like me like getting into like a fight or conversation with some guys and I started hopping on my toes like I I, I was the stuff. And then uh, like, if that, like, and I have dreams like that all the time where just like some things going on. It could be anything. One moment I'm playing some type of kung fu action fight, flying through buildings, you're know, tearing them up. Next moment I'm inside Metal Gear or some type of zombie dream. It's just people who have dreams like that. It occur often. I, I'm a perfect example. So, if say time I aren't ha is not having these dreams on like a day to day basis or like every uh, every few weeks or so, and that dream was just a one off. It could be an epiphany. It could be future sight. It could be the top tier foreshadowing, as it is. Because what's going to happen to the future? Because if it does happen in City Z, no one lives in the current day City Z, and no one finds it strange, right? Because the whole dream happened before Zaytama was a hero, and it, it happened before the whole mosquito raid with Genos and everything like that, and the whole beef king incident. If that was the case, right? If that was the honest case. Are you telling me that there was no S-Class heroes to show up in that dream? I, 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 so they didn't say Thomas' dream, it would make sense. It would make sense, but even then, even for a dream, say Thomas was aware that other heroes existed. Mm, actually, I take that as 50 50. It's, it's been a while since I saw the beginning. No, 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 you had to be aware that he wasn't the only hero. But he didn't know there was a hero association. That type of thing. So there's no guarantee he would have shot the S-Class heroes at all, but... And just for that dream, the fact that there was nobody else there, it was like an entirely empty city. Even before Saitama lived there before, it was an entire empty city inside the City Z, until those mosquitoes showed up. So why would he dream about there being an empty city? There would it be any collateral damage? I even had a dream of collateral damage, I fought Galactus, and I said, screw it! I somehow got Galactus powers, and I was like, I'm, I'm gonna destroy everything! I had like some type of elbow rocket, blam, just blew craters into the planet. And the planet didn't even look right, it's like some type of organic earth compound. That was like, screw it, I'm going to destroy this place, I'm going to destroy everything. I did a complete 360 with that elbow rocket. It was terrible, it was water everywhere, everywhere, I just obliterated the place. Now it's like, I'm going to go towards the core of some deep water, I went up to space and that's where it, I guess some type of reset happened, I was like, no, I don't want this power. I don't want to destroy. And Galactus went off to some other type of city and I had to go chase him down and went through some water. Meaning, meaning like some. I guess you could say some cartoon. T like, it wasn't funny Mimo characters. But it'd be characters that'd be showing up in like the Penguins movies or something. Or uh, Happy Feet or something. They was talking and everything. And it's just. Hey, hey, th 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 those are dreams, man. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Those, those are the dreams. So I'm just saying for a person who has some pretty extraordinary dreams, if this was common, say Tama would just. What happens frequently, but he doesn't. 
It had the scripted details, but there's none there. There's none there at all. <sighs> there was none there at all. Not even cars going by in the background. There was just nothing. It was just an empty place. Like it was still in City Z. Before the mosquitoes took over and exterminated everybody. So. Anyway, maybe I'm just crazy or something. Maybe, maybe this is all I mean. I want to know your guys' thoughts and opinions about the Subterraneans. Do you believe they'll have like play a major role into the future of the series? Or do you just believe it was just a one-off dream and it's just always just showing some backstory towards the subterraneans and never know which shit back up? In my opinion they are, but who knows? Can I present the evidence? I find it suspicious. I find it quite strange. But hey. Anything can happen, Bobby. Anything can happen. Let me start with Caleb. You got thoughts and opinions. Like, comment, subscribe, and check out the web comic in the description below. Uh, you might enjoy it, you might not. I don't know. <laughs> I, I enjoy it myself. Maybe we start with King and then. Peace.